Hey guys, what's cracking? Godsman here coming at you with another set of clan collection reveals for volume 5 and 6. So uh, we've got a pretty big batch this time around, a lot of different clans, got some new support here, and uh, also in addition to this being a pretty big batch, this is a rather polarizing batch, I warn you. We've got some really good cards, especially the last one we're going to talk about tonight, and also a couple pretty trash cards, for lack of a better term. Um, I, I don't want to say they're trash, but they're not that great, but we'll get more. Anyway, uh, let's start with uh, potentially one of the better ones, which is the new Grand Blue card. So we got the two other Grand Blue cards to go with King Serpent, which is actually, get this, Seven Seas support. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. Um, seven Seas support. Now, uh, let's go over it. The first one is going to be the Grade 3, which is uh, Ochi Boyash. However, uh, however you pronounce it, this is what the whale does, uh, three effects. So first one is that it gets 3k for each seven seas that you have in your drop and that is bound just continuously on banner rear. Uh, in fact, all of its effects are banner rear. Uh, the second one being an act, which is to remove a treasure marker as if it wasn't um, clear enough that this is a seven seas card. You choose up to two grade two or less cards with seven seas in their name from your drop and you call them to rear. And then the third effect is a Vanner rear, the obligatory Vanner rear when it hits, you choose one of your zones and put the treasure marker on it. Uh, either Van Circle, Rear Circle, yada yada, right? If, if you know seven Cs, you know what this does. And treasure markers is of course the game plan. You try to rack up to six and then you beat them down like nobody's business. Uh, pretty solid card. Let's talk about the second one though. So uh, the grade two is Night King Hazes. So Hazes has a pretty sweet couple of effects. The first one being the unique effect, which is Vanner Rear when it's placed. Doesn't matter where, and it can be on Vanner Rear, so this is a ride target potentially. You CB1, in order to peep top five, you add a seven Cs from that top five to your hand and you discard the rest, that's very important. Second one is, once again, the obligatory uh, get a marker if you hit effect. So this is fan freaking tastic 7C support. Uh, Ojibayash is neat in the sense that it's sort of like a Skull Dragon for the decks. It's not as strong as Skull Dragon very clearly, but it's still pretty big. And the fact that you can get back 7Cs means that your uh, recursion can be uh, within the 7C subclan. You'll have to rely on a lot of outside support in order to keep your cards coming back to the field should they get removed. Now, you don't have like this sort of hollow-esque effect where you're getting rid of them a lot, but it's still good, especially in the case of recurring, say, your interceptors, the grade one interceptor that intercepts from the back row should you have a... Uh, a, not yeah should you have a marker right um although i think it only intercepts from the back row in combination with the uh, main grade three of the deck uh night storm i think its name is uh correct me if i'm wrong anyway so that's pretty good skill and yeah it's just a good generic grade three to go well not generic it's a good seven c's grade three it's a good companion grade three uh you don't want to write this clearly but I mean, if you have to, you have to. At least it has all this effect on banner rear. So it's very versatile. Whether it's getting you advantage or just servicing as a beater to help demand the on hits, it's good stuff. Night Hazes is also really good. Uh, it's a searcher for the deck, which is great because the more searching, the better. The fact that it's locked behind a counter blast is a little bit annoying, but it's not non-negotiable. You have things like cut lists in the clan, um, albeit it's not seven Cs. But um, one of the things that one of my friends has brought up is... Hazes is pretty good in Negrobolt because the whole thing about Negrobolt is it tries to mill very, very, very fast. You need to get increments of 10 in your drop zone at any given time in order to just hit big and hit lethal. Hazes helps with that because uh, even if you don't run a lot of 7Cs in that deck, let's pay attention to the details. The devil's in the details. Uh, it pitches five from top of deck potentially. Yes, that is true. You peep top five and where do anything you don't add to the hand goes? They go to the drop zone. So even if you don't plus, it's essentially Sea Skeleton Navigator, albeit for a counter blast. That's pretty solid. We do like that. So yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of other things to say other than this is good stuff for seven Cs. Will it push the deck to any sort of competitive relevance? Hmm. No. But maybe it's a rogue contender now 
maybe not. It's an interesting case because Grand Blue isn't really much of a rush strategy. Uh, it can hurt you really quick, really early, especially if you happen to go into, say, Column Bar and Ghost Ship and stuff like that. It can rush you early, but I, it wasn't really oriented as such, in my opinion. This, this being like a rush centered deck is pretty deadly, but. The critical weakness of 7Cs was never about things like consistency, in my opinion, or nor was it like having a big beater necessarily. I think the biggest thing about 7Cs is the on-hit reliance. The ergo, the biggest weakness is your opponent reads the card. If they see that there are a bunch of on-hits, even people who are sticklers but are experienced against this deck, those sticklers are going to guard against these a lot, I would imagine. So you have to still find a way to put your opponent into pressuring situations. Um, the grade three does help with that because it's a pretty big beater. It's very annoying to guard, but they can still really limit what you hit them with. And of course, if they want to chance you hitting crits, that could get really annoying really fast because then crits essentially get some counter blast uh, for less hits in exchange. Uh, it's weird how that goes, right? Hoping for the opponent to hit crits without even having to go for a limit break or something like that. It's very strange, but that's just what it is, right? So still, this is fan-freaking-tastic of support. I love the direction they went. They knew how to support 7Cs, and whether or not this elevates the deck to a point of like relevance, it doesn't matter. Even if you play casually, this is what's exactly needed to help the deck like not be forgotten in the sands of time to some crappy little like sub clan anyway let's move on to the next reveals and we're back so uh nova grappler is up next and who's that i spy why yes it's ethics buster extreme now of course with all the other beast dds that we've been getting as of late ethics buster stream pretty obvious pick it's also a break right era card so again obvious pick kind of had to have it <laughs> or <Where's> minerva <laughs> uh anyway so here's extreme uh what does he do well all right let's go over it yeah, you can tell by my tone. I don't like this very much, but you'll see why. So, uh, two skills. The first one being an auto on van. When your beast deity stands by card's ability, if you've got regular ethics buster in the soul, that thing's going to get 5k. Uh, not once per turn, anything that stands essentially gets 5k as long as you got the cross ride. Second skill is also an auto on van, but this one is a once per turn, which is that when you uh, drive check a beast deity, you can counter blast one and discard a card in order to uh, choose a rear guard with beast deity in its name with grade equal to the card of beast deity's name revealed during that drive check and stand it. If you're a limit break though, you get to stand all of the beast deities on your field that share the same grade. I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking with this. This is a re-standing vanguard for beast deities that is worse than the re-standers they have in beast deities already. Why would you ride this? This is not good. Just run Ethics Buster Reverse. Hell, run Illuminal Dragon. Those are both better than this. This is overcosted and way too unreliable. Literally, you need to drive check something very specific. This is more specific, it feels like, than the regular extreme. And it's over costed because it's a counter blast one and a discard. Lovely in a deck like Nova Grab, which already struggles with card advantage. And then it's like, yay, you get to stand up one. And oh, the big reveal with Limit Break is you get to stand all of them. I guess that's cool because you certainly struggled to get to those restands. And let me just say something like, sure, okay, you get 5k for all of them, but that power line's kind of pitiful at the end of the day. It's not that worth it. This car just doesn't do enough. It doesn't feel like an adequate finisher. You're still going to be running Ethics Buster Reverse, almost certainly. Um, and even if not, there's just other ways to take Beast Deities. You just don't end on this. You, it demands so much for such a basic result. Not even like a low result, just a basic result for Beast Deity. It's just multi-attack, and it's a very specific multi-attack. That's it, really, that's it. And I'm just gonna be real with y'all. Just um, come in close, come in close. Another card tonight has a restand like this, but better. Stay tuned. And we're back. Okay, whoo, yeah, uh, Ethics Buster Extreme. Pretty hot garbage. Wanted to just dip out there real quick. Just keep my shots real, keep my thoughts real short. Although rather they were kind of shots fired when you think about it, right? Cause uh, 
I don't like it. It was pretty bad. So, uh, just to ease my conscience and everyone else's conscience, let's talk about good cards. Yes, Jewel Knights. We've got a full lineup of Jewel Knights, which, uh, I mean, hey, just to call out my buddy, uh, Assault Rider here, he thought we were only going to get one because, oh, patterns, and they want to support other stuff, and, you know, Jewel Knights already got two waves of support, you know, I'm like, no, they're going to give more Jewel Knights, he's like, no, 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 it doesn't follow patterns, and patterns broken again, yeah, Bushy's unpredictable, golden rule, if you think Bushy's going to do a thing, it's not always the case, so, let's go over these Jewel Knights, <laughs> uh, I hope uh, he doesn't get too mad at me for that. Anyway, so, okay, starting down the line, we've got a grade one, two, and three. Refreshingly standard for what we would have come to expect from Clan Collection prior to this set. So, uh, Security Jewel Knight um, Alwayne. It's a grade one, and what does she do? Well, she rests herself as an act effect on rear to uh, put a normal unit on the drop to the bottom of the deck in order to soul charge one. Then you choose a Vanguard with Jewel Knight in its name, and it gets 5k until end of turn. Nice. Second skill is the Vanner Rear. Here comes the obligatory callover effect. So the call slash write over effect of this one is that you get to peep top two cards of your deck and you can add a Jewel Knight to your hand and the other one gets bot decked or both of them if you whiff, which may or may not happen. So, okay, Alwain is pretty solid. So uh, banning Jewel Knight, uh, Miranda. Miranda is a grade two and she has two effects. The uh, rear specific effect is auto when this unit attacks while not boosted. If your vanguard is a jewel knight, you get to counterblast one in order to choose your vanguard and Miranda's power becomes the same power as that chosen unit's power. The second effect, aka the call slash ride over effect, is that you get to soul charge one, yay, and if you have no face up cards in your damage zone, you counter charge one. We're gonna return to that, that's really good. Broken Heart Jewel Knight Ashley Reverse, oh my god, this artwork, exceptional artwork, great artwork. What does she do? Well, this very anticipated unit doesn't disappoint. Her first effect is an act on Van, which is to Soul Blast 2 and lock one of your rear guards. You get to choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and retire them. And then you also look at the top four cards of your deck and call a Jewel Knight from among them, the Rescue Bot Deck. She is coupling this with a second effect, which is an auto on Van. When she swings, if you have two or more locked cards, you counterblast one in order to search for uh, two great two or lower cards with Jewel Knight in their card names. Call them in the rear, shuffle your deck, and then for each locked card you possess, this unit gets 10k power until end of turn, so your Vanguard gets 10k, not the units called. If you happen to have three or more locked cards on your field, it also gains the ability to prevent your opponent from calling Sentinels during her battle. Yes. Yes. Good support. Good Jewel Knights. Oh boy, I actually need to just... Give me a second. Give me a drink of water. Oh man. These are the complete package. They all fall in line perfectly with the Jewel Knight mechanic. Use soul for powerful multi-attack. And they do so well with each other in mind. All wing is essentially better Morbidus when it comes to its rear effect. Because rather than counter blast one to bot deck something to do the whole 5k and soul charge, you just need to rest it and bot deck something in order to give a 5k and soul charge. Now, the 5k is more specific, it's just to the Vanguard, but that's okay. And also, this is resting, which means you aren't able to boost slash attack with it. However, you can still call over it. And the fact that it's not boosting means that it works well with Miranda because Miranda activates when not boosting and can get a potentially big boatload of power for it. So that's cool. And uh, this can be potentially free because yeah, Miranda gets to counter charge <laughs> in addition to soul charge. That is really big because counter charging is potentially important in Jewel Knight and you want more Jewel Knight names. 
So you don't want to run counter charger options, which are rather low in a deck like Royal Paladin. You didn't really have good counter chargers. Alt Mile has counter charge, but that's because Alt Mile's whole thing is flipping down a bunch of damage anyway, right? This is an exclusive counter charge potentially for Jewel Knights. Uh, not exclusive in the sense that only Jewel Knights can use it, which makes her especially kick ass. She's potentially generic. But just the fact that uh, she gives that option to Jewel Knights just widens the toolbox. The more things you can do by calling over Jewel Knights to further the offense, further variety, keep yourself going into the long run, the better. And Miranda fills that role perfectly. Solid grade two attacker, even more solid than Lael, to be honest, and has the unique utility of counter charge because you're counter blasting for her, counter blasting for Salome. And I guess you could also counter blast for Morbidus potentially, but um, you could also counter blast for when you call over Ashley for that crit, which is relevant. And that can be especially relevant because Ashley Reverse gets more threatening when you do the cross ride. After all, uh, the Sentinel Restrict is pretty devastating, albeit you need to Soul Blast 6 in theory in order to get it, but you are plussing at least 2, um, probably. I mean, you could plus a bunch, although considering you only have five zones and you're locking three. Actually, no, you could call something and then lock that thing. So yeah, you could be plussing three off of that if you chose to Soul Blast six. And you're also gonna potentially neg your opponent's front row in the, pro in the process. So this is very much in theme with what Ashley originally did. You know, you get to snipe an opponent's rear guard and then summon something new in response and it's taken to the next level. Now, when you combine this with the base Ashley who gives a crit, suddenly she's big as hell. She's big. She's, she, with force markers, she's gonna be hitting like 40 plus K power. That's huge. And then with the crit, that's threatening. If you are, if your opponent's at four, it's threatening lethal. If your opponent's at three, you can potentially hit a crit trigger, which will then threaten lethal. That is a good finisher. Now, one thing I will note about Ashley Reverse is she doesn't have a call slash ride over effect. She's the only one who doesn't have something like that. So this just pushes more and more the idea that she is meant to be a finisher. Sure, she gains you advantage, albeit for lost Soul Blast, but I don't think that was intended. It was intended to close out the game as much as possible, no matter what your game state was and it does it quite well. It gives you extra calls for potentially five attacks as well as your Vanguard being dummy thick <laughs> in more ways than one anyway. So yeah, that's really cool. And of course with locking, locking in general has synergies with both of this because you can lock Alwain after it's rested itself and used its effect. And on top of that, if you have a back row locked, that even more makes Miranda very powerful because it can still swing huge without boosting. And Miranda's counter charge couples very nicely now with Ashley Reverse's counter blast cost. So there's just so much to love here about this. These work so well with one another that you could see that there was a lot of love in this design and they work well with other Jewel Knights. And just taking it from the general royal paladin aspect these are potentially splashable all wayne is a little bit weird with her call slash ride over effect because it's not as beneficial as units or morbidus which are essentially plus ones or in the case of units you could neg one on the opponent but in the holistic card advantage thing you're plusing this one is a plus that could very well whiff and that's an issue but it's a very consistent counter charger. I mean, not counter charger, soul charger. So depending on how you have built your deck, you could still run all wanes as a part of the Jewel Knight engine. But even if not, Miranda is definitely an include in the Jewel Knight engine, just for the fact that she is a counter and soul charger. Now, for having the first effect be locked into Jewel Knights, that is smart but it might not stop her utility. We'll have to see how Royal Paladins go about their combo plays, but this has a boatload of the potential. Ashley Reverse herself may fall short of Salome though, when it comes to being a finisher slash main vanguard. Salome having the essentially front row restand, because even the vanguard gets to restand, and for a pretty similar cost, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 4, 
it does make for more devastating multi attacks and you also gain some great advantage with it potentially and you get to proc a lot of call over effects Ash reverse doesn't do that so much however this is great because um one thing about salome and regular ashley is for like being big force clan numbers um you Ashley, not so much, but it's definitely with Salome. You want to put force markers particularly on your Vanguard, and this one follows through with that, makes it really big. Now, if your opponent, if you know your opponent has protect markers or ways of PGing, Ashley Reverse is going to come in mighty handy for that. She's going to be able to break through that by preventing it altogether. That's good. So I would say Ashley Reverse is not a four of in the deck. Regular Ashley and Salome are four ofs, but you would probably run a copy or two reverse because it's got good ways to close out the game when the scenario is very much tailored to it to appear. Overall, I would say that when you just objectively break these down, these are some of the best reveals we've ever gotten. And just in line with that, we've gotten incredible reprints. We've essentially reprinted the clan selection jewel knights, which was so important because Lael and Ashley were pretty expensive, not gonna lie. So the engine is in good states and jewel knight is officially complete as a deck i feel we can get more jewel knights and i would love to get more jewel knights they're so splashable they're so interesting and they just have such a tight-knit play style that is somewhat iconic but also just so cool with the whole ride and call over gimmick however this is more than enough now to make the deck feel solid and consistent you have nine jewel knights to go through now in the deck that means that in actuality you could in theory build a jewel knight deck with just jewel knights more or less that's really good you can have a lot i mean yeah you have a lot going for you because let's think about it with these nine targets uh these nine potential jewel knights you can have 12 ones 12 twos eight threes and the flex spot be whatever you want maybe i should reverse because of that sort of representation you can now have all jewel knights excluding triggers you're set your ability to proc not just the new grade one all way, but also be able to proc uh, Sybil is maximized. This deck has already been appearing in the V meta. So let me just say with these new includes, that deck might just explode because its Hyrule was so phenomenal that it was crushing things already despite being somewhat inconsistent. You've added consistency and options to that. We're in for some Jewel Knights, fellas, and I couldn't be happier. All right, well, that's enough on them. We've got more reveals to go to tonight, so see you there. All right, let's just get through this one quick. Uh, yeah, so right after the Jewel Knight reveal, which was really, really poggers, we got something which was not poggers, uh, and that's Dragon Monk Goku. Uh, see him? You'll, you, you see this artwork? You've registered it in mind? Okay, it's gone now. So, uh, Dragon Monk Goku, here's what it does. Uh, simply put, it's got two effects. First one's an act. You counterblast one and pitch a three from hand in order to get drive plus one. The second skill is that after it's done battling, you counterblast one again, and you perform all the uh, falling effects based on the grades that you drive checked, um, normal units specifically, so no grade zeros here. Grade three, you get to pop two of your opponent's rear guards. If you, uh, that's grade three. Grade two is that you chose a, you choose a rear guard and stand it. And then grade one is you choose one of your rear guards and it gets 10k until end of turn. Uh, I'll be real with you guys. The fact that Dauntless Drive Dragon's getting reprinted is more excited than this crap. Um, Goku's neat. I, I, I don't know. Look, if Ethics Buster Extreme did not feel adequate for its deck, which was Beast Deities, Goku doesn't feel adequate for his clan, which is Kagero. What, why would you play Goku? D just because it seems fun? I mean, sure, go ahead. You might get some pops. You might get some stands or some 10Ks. That's neat. That's that's cool. It means you're always going to get something no matter what you're drive checking. But 
If you want to get the best out of your like drive checks and devastate the opponent with like power and effects, just run Dauntless Reverse. Dauntless Reverse makes normal units really kick ass because then you're able to like use the unlock effect and get more drives and power, right? You essentially can't one or two to pass Dauntless Reverse at this point because he's always going to get at least plus 20,000 power should he have Counter Blast. Speaking of which, you might be like, oh, well, but Dauntless Reverse uses a bunch of Counter Blast. Do, 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 do. Goku does two. Both of its effects in combination mean two Counter Blast. It's not worth it. Dude, you're essentially counterblasting one to break even in card advantage just for the hope that your drive plus one will allow you to proc different grades. And that's hope because you don't really stack in this clan. I don't know what you do with Goku. I just, I don't, you know, I don't, right? Like this is even worse than Ethics Buster if I'm being real. At least Ethics Buster may have a use in the future. I don't know who would play Goku, right? I mean, look, all your Dragon Ball fans out there, I get it, I get it. It's sad days, man. Dragon Monk Goku is just kind of a flop. He's probably going to end up being the worst grade three that we've had in this clan selection. I mean, clan collection. That's pretty much a fact at this point. I, I don't see anything being worse than him. I hope that ages well and we don't get something that's just absolute sewage water. And yeah, why even say more about him? I, I just don't like him. There's no point for him. Uh, artwork, kind of neat. Whatever. Meh. Anyway. One last reveal, and this one. Prepare yourself. See you there. And we're here, the final reveal of the night, and holy crap, it is Vowing Saber Dragon Reverse. Yes, the very first reverse unit we have ever gotten, and now he is finally being retrained in V. It's, we've been waiting for so long to see this guy, and he's finally arrived. He's finally here and i'll just tell you straight up he kicks ass let's talk about it so vowing saber dragon reverse eradicator what do we do first effect is an act once per turn you counter blast one and lock one of your rear guards your opponent chooses one card from their hand rear guards and drop zone and binds them oh boy trishula is that you <laughs> it's not even done yet second effect uh just to synthesize this, because it's kind of long, this is the Vowing Sword Dragon effect. So uh, whenever it sees a binder in the front deck, it asks your opponent, hey, bind another copy and I get 5k. If not, I'm going to give something 10k. Cool. Great. Except now with the first effect, it can proc itself. Third effect, and potentially the most devastating one. Auto on Van. When this unit attacks, if there is a total of one or more cards with Vowing Sword in its card name in your soul or on rear circle, you counter blast one and soul blast one. Choose one of your rear guards and stand it. But if you're at limit break, stand all, I repeat them, all of your rear guards. What the hell? This is so freaking good. This is the nuts. This is the shiznit. Guys, we've waited so long for Vowing Saber Dragon and he does not disappoint. Let's go over it. So. Straight up, unlike a lot of other reverse units, which are just meant to have like kind of neat interactions or just alternative playstyles and strategies to their base counterparts, Vowing Saber Dragon Reverse is just Vowing Sword, but more. It's got the Vowing Sword effect, albeit not like the quote unquote break ride thing. It's got the main effect, but now, key critically, it can proc itself and three times at that it's got the trishula effect and it's such a strong trishula effect because you don't minus at all sure you lock a card but that's not a minus you don't minus but your opponent is potentially minusing two for that one from the hand which is important and man is that just insane to me this is ammon this is like ammon essentially it doesn't rip as hard as ammon does and it does have more of a cost than ammon does depending on how you look at it but it doesn't hurt your resources unlike ammon and on top of that, it just leads to a big ass power up, which is a lot like Ammon. So yeah, this is Trishula slash Ammon, but you know, like in the same tier, if not a little bit better, this is insane. And of course, let's not forget about this third skill. Dude, Ethics Buster, eat your heart out. This is just a straight up field restand for a simple limit break condition. Of course, it's got the cost and you do need to have Valuing Sword somewhere. But once you've got that, you are hitting hard now admittedly eradicators don't have big power lines they're not really big with their attacks they've always been more of a field control type of deck 
However, um, let's keep in mind this second effect. If you manage to proc the second effect several times, you are able to give increments of 5 to 10k on your rear guards, meaning that when they restand, they're going to still maintain that power value. That's important. That means that you can hit over defensives and you keep on asking for big, big shields. So this thing is the complete package. There's not a lot here that I could say is a straight up flaw about Saber Dragon Reverse. Sure, in total, you do use two Counter Blast and a Soul Blast in addition to locking a rear guard in order to activate all of its effects. But you, that is not that bad. You are able to get a counter charge from using the Eradicator duo, right? Which is Obon Gongson. But even if not, you can still do this for a couple turns and really devastate the opponent. And you don't always need to proc one or the one or both of these skills, but you will you will probably want to proc at least one. In combination, though, it's definitely worth the cost. You can also use Lightning of Hope Helena potentially, but that's not Eradicator, so I would prefer the duo because they are Eradicators. It keeps within the name consistency and genre. Now, let's talk about something that maybe some people haven't thought about yet which is the stun verse implication. So if you're a premium guy, you probably have thought about this. And if you're not, you can probably disregard this, but I just need to talk about this anyway. Vowing Sword Reverse, sorry, not just, just regular Vowing Sword, was really potent with stun verse because this second effect, the effect that was carried over to reverse, was so impactful with stunburst stunburst can get you a ton of binds and that means you were getting increments of 5 to 10k all over the place you were able to ma amass a huge board in addition to having just supreme control you're just wipe your opponent's field snipe card from their drop and then snipe cards from their hand and then you get all this power to boot that was insane with this you're able to maintain that benefit and on top of that, you're able to continue to rip resources from your opponent and get a lot of multi-attack for it. This is going to do it. If we weren't already going to st ban Stunverse, this is going to enforce that. I get the feeling now, and this is just my theory, that they released this knowing about the Stunverse implications, but with a ban list that's coming up, they're actually going to hit Stunverse. That why that way this won't be so bad. And if that's the case, then we're in the clear. If not, there's way too much to be concerned about here. This is going to bump eradicators up to the top level. There's just no doubt about it. Eradicators were already really strong. Stunverse was busted. This is gonna just make it more busted because it synergizes with it way more than Vowing Sword did, because it just is Vowing Sword, but more. So yes, I would not be surprised in the least if this was a strategic move in preparation for that Stunverse ban. But even moving away from that, another premium deck to talk about is Link Joker. Link Joker can potentially use this, albeit you won't be getting this third effect because it is Vowing Sword specific. This is Vowing Saber Dragon Reverse. You do need the base form and Link Joker doesn't have access to it. But even if not, you could still use the first two effects. Those are good Vanguard effects. You'll get, of course, your Excel marker just from riding this thing. And then you're also able to just straight up snipe resources from them and then power up your units. This is cool, especially since when you think about it, Link Joker also has bind units. Things like the leaders especially have the ability to bind the opponent's cards so the synergy is definitely there and i think testing is warranted for how well this reverse unit works with that deck overall this thing is the nuts it's one of the greatest reverse units if not the greatest reverse unit we have received thus far this reverse unit is just the complete package, it is stacked. It works well with everything within the Eradicator clan. And for the cost that it does possess, it does so much. We can just see clearly the power level this is at. I have said this a thousand times, but I think it holds a lot of impact to repeat it here and now. Clan Collection Volume 5 and 6 has raised the bar in some categories. We've had trash like Goku and Ethics Extreme. 
but then we turn over to things like vowing saber and this is the kind of level of card design that is sort of unprecedented in the previous two clan collections we've got strong cards such as um, raging form which was really strong ammon and salome were also really strong but i would argue that just on paper this the benefits of this card is immediate. We're going to be seeing this doing some damage, especially in premium. In V, I do not know for certain whether or not this will push Eradicators to like the metal level, but it will sure as hell push that deck pretty close, if anything. Eradicators have lacked a couple things, um, and although it doesn't help with the department of card advantage, it does help with the department of being able to use your rear guards to help close out games rather than just being a vanguard centric strategy that gets shut down by pgs that was always a problem with this that's not the case anymore so now you have the ability to buff your rears and make them threatening for a lot more multi-attack that in combination with things like rising phoenix spark rain and demolition dragon helps to keep your binds going on more multi-attack and more power so yeah, be on the lookout for this one. This is one of the best reveals we've had, period, by a mile. We waited so long for Vowing Saber, but I can tell you for a fact, it was worth it. All right then, that's gonna do it for today's reveals. Uh, I may have gotten a little bit serious there, but I just really had to emphasize this last one. These were pretty good reveals. Well, actually rather polarizing reveals. The Jewel Knights, Vowing Saber, and even to a great extent, the 7C support were great. We're not going to talk about ethics. We're not going to talk about Goku. Move him to the side. Hush hush. We got some great reveals tonight. And it makes me more and more hyped to see what they do next. Glendios is still on the way. That's a big one to look out for. We still have Aqua Force on the way. We still have Spino Reverse on the way. There is a lot to look forward to, and I hope to be able to review these with you guys and see just what Bushy has up their sleeves. The design department has been pretty good. They've had some flops, like the unmentionables, but nevertheless, I'm still very hopeful because this set has been proving to be quite big, if you ask me. So yeah. With all that said, if you would like to see more Vanguard content, do subscribe down below and check out some of my other videos. And with that, take care. God bless.